this is something that it's it's just a gift that he has he has that eye he has that way of thinking that allows him to really work with any case I mean I challenge anybody to bring a dog to Richard that he can't fix I, he's gonna get it done you let him do what he needs to do it's gonna happen and I think that's just incredible gonna fall asleep soon she's at a spa this is spa day <laughs> this turned into conflict day to spa day okay and now that we have a little trust I want to try to do a little scenario do a front you're gonna go up walk come back forward slow and then try to pet all right there we go good no pressure I'm not doing anything Perfect. Relax. The eyes closing. <laughs> no, not there. No. Go towards the bone. Leave it. Right. I'm doing, doing no, no. it. Perfect. And you stay right there, right? You just achieved something right now that you could never do. I know. He didn't even think about growling at you. Wow. And it was in his mouth. <laughs> wow. What he gets most aggressive over, he gave up. And he's a one up. He's a, he's not a one in a million. He's a one in the entire earth of a kind dog trainer. The absolute best there is. I've searched online everywhere. There's nobody that compares to Richard Hines. Uh, he definitely has a gift that um, is not something you can pull from a book. You can't get this stuff from a book. You know, you get to the end of these books that are so overpublished right now. All these super pros saying, you know, this, that, and, and only using one method or, and not the other. And it just, at the end of the chapters, they didn't address her issues. They just said muzzle manage or euthanize. They didn't really give any kind of explanation on how to resolve the issue until Richard. And Richard just knows what to do. So it just cut to the chase, went down to Richard, and everything was resolved. The movie, she still did it. Hey! See that? That's good, That's good TV. Beans. 
Thank you. Oh, I wish I had that camera. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> So for the camera person, the, the interviewer, there to go down and touch Gypsy and talk before, it would have been rah, 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 and when it bit the microphone, bit the girl, bit her hands. I mean, you could not go near Gypsy. Not even, don't even think about touching her or going close to her. And then Nick Lachey comes up when they were filming for his show and he gets down, Gypsy gets up, he pets her before if he would have even went down, she would have went lunging at him like a crazy <laughs> psycho dog and tried to bite him and tear him up. That is the huge progress and success that we had gotten with Gypsy after she came to me in Miami. No way, no how you could walk her down the street or forget anyone trying to touch her. That would never happen. I'll tell you, it's been years, Richard, trying to find this, some way to control this dog, dog specifically. You know, she's fairly new, but, you know, like, when he starts barking, she barks. And I'll tell you, watching TV shows and videos, and nothing really worked for me. Yeah, and you were telling me, you got all the books, you read all the books. It cost me a books. lot of money. I uh -huh. spent a lot of money. Like trainers, online, yes. everything you read about these behaviors, that I should have anything during this training with you, most of the things that you're hearing and seeing, have you ever seen before? Never, never. And I, I should have made this trip long ago. I should have like Googled you, found you. Just 20 minutes ago, this Rottweiler couldn't be touched by anybody. Get Side, 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 Just come around. <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> Oh, she's loving you now. You know. He was really hurting people. Got you good? Yeah. That's what it feels like then, huh? Uh, around the food and nobody would try to feed him in a crate for the fear that he was going to savagely attack you. But now... Hot dogs, everything else that he really wants. I sit here, we couldn't even be in the perimeter before. Good boy, good boy. His psychology and understanding of dogs is a phenomenal uh, gift, if you will. Um, I've seen many trainers. I've seen uh, uh, many videos and stuff online. I, I just, I, I, now that I've watched him and, and understanding the psychology of, that he's taught me at this level, I see these other trainers who claim to be master trainers um, uh, really are embarrassing. but this is our classic clients, right? This dog snaps at everybody, snaps at the owner, snaps at dogs, it cannot handle life. It's completely fallen apart, become antisocial, has lost itself because it's been treated as a human. So we gotta go back, treat it as dog, get out of this, break that psychological thing and make this dog confident, happy, and a social dog again. But the only, there's only one way to do this. So on this, this is the first day with this dog. It's staying us for a few weeks for training. Every time Omar moves, the dog stares at him. This is a classic case, and I wanted to show this a little bit. First time out training with us. Biting the owners, antisocial, 
can't go near anything or anybody. It's a terrified dog in life, right? So this is one of our cases that we deal with all the time, all day. I'm gonna show now too. I want Omar to try to give the dog cheese. The reason the dog's not gonna take cheese is not because it doesn't want food. When you have a chicken and you have a coward, they are not gonna take food under pressure, right? But once we start the training process over a few days and we start putting pressure, they're gonna take food again. Right? They're going to lighten up after it. But this is just a point that I want to make. When people seek help for aggression or fear problems, and you think that you're going to use a trainer who does positive only and get through this, big mistake. Or else I would do it. Right? So we're going to show an example right now. And I want Omar to try to give the dog food. And then we're going to go over some scenarios, watch the dog flip out, because the dog's going to try to bite Omar all over the place right now. So let me see Omar. Try to give us some food. Now you see here, right? See the licking of the lips? That's not food oriented, like, um, food. That is stress. Every time the licking of the mouth, the pressure, right? And then you can see, see again, lick the mouth, lick the mouth, lick the mouth. So here, right, as I come here, caught now between me and the food, terrified, paranoid, right? So right now, while Omar has the food, I'm just gonna do something quick. I haven't done it, I don't know. I'm gonna touch the dog in the rear and we're probably gonna get a jumpy reaction and spin and maybe a little scream. I don't know, so we're gonna see right now. So, the, see the jump, right? Now, I want Omar obviously not gonna take the food, right? Now, pull him off. No, come in, come in, all the way. Go to touch. Watch, Par ah, you see, paranoia. Now we're in close range, closing the distance on the brain. Touch. Try. Right. Uh -huh. This way. Just go to pet. Yeah, you go. Right. So, any kind of little pressure put on this dog, we have to break this and get the dog stronger, more comfortable. But this is our classic clients, right? This dog snaps at everybody, snaps at the owner, snaps at dogs. It cannot handle life. It's completely fallen apart become antisocial, has lost itself because it's been treated as a human. So we got to go back, treat it as dog, get out of this, break that psychological thing and make this dog confident, happy, and a social dog again. But you know, there's only one way to do this. So, start the ball. Right, bud. All right. Stay there. Hold, hold the light. Okay, now, why I want Omar to stay there. If I come behind the dog and I don't put pressure on the brain from behind, the dog is more comfortable. You see he's starting to relax his eyes. I took the thread off and I surprised him. I got in there already. All right, so now I'm good. Down the body, up and down. You can see the relaxation, right? I've never touched this dog before. So this is the first time ever I'm touching this dog, all right? So now, Omar tries again from the front. Try to pet. Ready, first breakthrough. First time he's been able to pet it. Just move around. Now, just start to move forward. A little pressure. Pull forward. Pull forward. Pull forward. Yeah. Alright, settle. Try to pet. Okay. Better. So, little steps at a time. So here, you saw her on camera, just starting, every time we'd move and try to go touch, snap, snap, snap. Get it comfortable, get it comfortable, push, push, push. Food is not gonna happen. Positive is not gonna happen until we get through all the other areas and then later, positive comes into play, but not to fix anything. Only to reward behaviors after, not now. Um, can I ask you what what did you notice that was different about Richard's training and philosophy that you had noticed about, you know, 
other trainers in the past? What makes him different? What was different? Okay, first of all, he, he the psychology. He knows the psychology of the dog. It's like he knows what those dogs are thinking and like everything that we think they're thinking and that we want to do is the opposite of what's supposed to be. So I found his, 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 his uh, training just fascinating to me. It, it's um, it, the psychology of it and understanding what the dog's thinking and it's the opposite of what we're thinking. And I, I was just amazed by the, the rapport that he has with the dogs and, and the way they respond to him. and. I was fascinated. I, I just couldn't get over it. I haven't seen that before, and, and I have had different trainers. Okay. And so that, that was the biggest thing for me was I, I was so, so interested in his psychology that I keep telling him, when are you going to write a book? When are you going to get a TV show? <laughs> he, he basically attacked the groomer, and I had to jump on the dog and get him away. After seeing that, um, it was evident that we needed someone to come and help us with the dog. Um, so my wife gave me the number to Richard Hines. It was the most fascinating thing that I've ever experienced due to the fact of how fast uh, Rambo caught on to everything. With, within the first class, it was 15 minutes. And as far as the psychology of what Richard does is absolutely amazing because he could see the dog and if he'll tweak it immediately and you'll see the dog respond to as he's tweaking things immediately and I sometimes ask him I say yeah but what about if the scenario was changed he'll say well then I'll just do this and we immediately do it and it's 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 unbelievable every time he comes over I, I'm I'm excited to see what we're gonna do next and then I always kind of doubt if he's gonna be able to do it and he proves me wrong every single time I mean I'm hoping for the day that I can just prove him wrong but it's it's it's, it's not happening, so. How, how are you convinced that, that Richard's training has taken hold? What, what evidence did you see? How did oh, you... my God. Well, I can tell you right now, the other night I had two, two Goldens over here, uh, a male and a female. We had like a little dog party. And I've been going to the park. Never in my life did I think I could take him to a park. And he hasn't, he hasn't reacted. He hasn't growled. I was staying at my friend's house a week ago with him perfect it's another male and female and, and 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 Richard has told me I've always focused on the males because that's what I saw but Richard said it's all across the board you know he has a fear aggression and it's not it, it, it can come out with the females too I had just never witnessed witnessed that so now the dog those dogs come over to my house they come inside he wasn't upset they were you know all over us you know wanted the attention he was fine so that's a huge huge step I want to invite more dogs over. And going to the park is just like never in my life did I think we could take him to a park. Do you share? Yeah, she can. So she came. Uh, she came to share water. She, she, came. Water. she oh, was. She came. Oh, good boy. Yeah, yeah. Good boy, buddy. Should give me more of your baby? Okay. I'm even going to take him to the doggy yappy hour that's starting this week. Really? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> to come down from Texas because we went through a few trainers that simply just didn't know how to train dogs. And I watched Richard's videos on YouTube and I knew I was going to bring my dog here. And once we got here, it's like it was in a day he had Max doing stuff that I couldn't even imagine and now we've been here a week and he used to be dog aggressive in dog parks after Richard worked with him he's not He's calm as can be. So now, before, when you got here, you weren't able to walk him really out in public, right? No, he'd go after kids, any strollers, bicycles, other dogs. No, we couldn't. And then here in the park, I think after the first session, 
he actually stopped going after things and stopped that aggressive lunging and then from there we were good up and down the parks with bikes <laughs> Came a long way with that a very long way and he is my service dog so it was important for me to get the best trainer so that i can always keep him and he doesn't get in trouble by doing something dumb yeah and then we were just in the dog pen now children running past him all over the dog face you know a few days ago we put a muzzle on him we went in just to test him because you were telling me how aggressive he is in the dog parks so with the muzzle on you know we calmed him down we had a few things and then the last two days we've had him off the muzzle and he's been great in the dog parks with all the dogs no aggression you want a treat? Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. you want to share? <laughs> This is unbelievable, but back home in Texas, he would never allow that. Hi, <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> 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 Children running past him, to him today actually, he's running right. to him, With nothing, so I mean it's actually perfect and he's running around playing. He's I think up. you gauged his temperament, he was more fearful than aggressive right. and you picked that up right away so we kind of got that out of him and now he has fun when yeah. he goes to the park. No, it was great to see him today. Mm -hmm. He was running around and playing with the dogs and chasing them the first time. Yesterday yeah. he, he took it all, but today he loosened up and actually went and played. Yeah, he's so, excited. Yeah, so he had a great time today. Mm -hmm. so, so when we go back to Texas, we're recommending Richard to everyone we know with dogs <laughs> and tell them that it's well worth the money you spend to get down here. I want to just let everyone know that Richard Hines is the best trainer and behavioralist that I've worked with. I chose him out of everyone in the world because I knew he was a professional, I, that he had it. And so, um, and he understands, every, he understands where uh, the behavior comes from, he knows the right training methods, to, he uses a variety of them, and so he's, there's, there's no one that I trusted more than Richard, and I highly recommend him. 